Hi, I'm Lou. Have you heard about this groovy thing called forest score? Well, did you know you don't actually need a massive forest and it's nothing to do with school? Confused? I don't blame you. In this video, I'm going to help you understand a bit more about the philosophy of forest school and give you seven key pieces of information that it's important to know about it. Over recent years, Forest School has really grown in interest and momentum, which is great because of course we want lots more people to be able to experience the Forest School programme. However, as interest in it has grown and more people have been talking about it, there has also been misconceptions and misunderstandings about the philosophy and about the ethos. So that's what I'm going to try and unpick in this video. It's also worth just saying up front, I'm based in the UK and so what I'm going to be talking about is forest school in the context of the UK and how it's defined here. That might not be true for other countries. So here are seven key facts about forest school that I think it's worth knowing about. One. Forest School is an ethos, it's a process, it's a way of working with people. It's not a set programme of activities, it's not a badge that your school can collect, it's not a place that you go to, it's the atmosphere that's created through a community of people being in a woodland environment ideally together and how the forest school leader facilitates it. So it's a, it's a philosophy, it's a way of being, it's a process, not a set programme. It's part of a wider family of outdoor learning. There are hundreds of different ways of working outdoors with people and forest school is just one particular approach. That's not to say that the other approaches aren't valuable themselves, they are. In fact, all sorts of outdoor learning is hugely valuable, but they're designed to do different things. So Forest School is very good at doing what it's designed to do, which is build confidence, self-esteem and emotional resilience in people. But so are other types of outdoor learning really, really beneficial. If you're interested in that, I have got another video on that that I'll put the link in the description below to. Two. Forest School first arrived in the UK in the early 1990s and it was brought over by a group of early years practitioners who'd been over to Scandinavia, particularly Denmark, to look at early years practice over in those countries. And they were so inspired that they brought back all of these ideas and set up their own version of what they did in Denmark in their own nursery and they called it Forest School. Apparently, the direct translation from the Danish would have been nature nursery. Now, these nursery practitioners were based down in Somerset at Bridgewater College and people started hearing about what they were doing. And so as interest grew, because they were based in a college, the college thought, well, we could create a qualification in Forest School for all of these people who were interested. And so that's what they did. And so interest grew and then people came to be qualified to become a forest school practitioner and then took it back to various other parts of the UK. And then the same things happened there. They started running forest school and other people heard about it, became interested in it and then kind of sought to be trained in it. So Forest School is a grassroots movement that stemmed from people hearing about it, seeing it and thinking that's brilliant, I want to do that. And so bringing it back to their place. It isn't a top-down initiative, for example, from government saying everybody needs to be doing Forest School. It's literally the people that have been driving this from the bottom up. Three. As interest in Forest School grew, more and more people became involved and started kind of connecting and reaching out to each other. In 2010, the UK Forest School community decided that we needed some sort of definition and principles behind forest school practice so that we could more clearly communicate to other people what was forest school and what wasn't forest school. And so it's worth knowing that there is an agreed definition out there. So the formal definition is that Forest School is an inspirational process that offers all learners regular opportunities to achieve, develop confidence and self-esteem through hands-on experiences in a woodland environment or a natural environment with trees. 
It also recognises in a second part that Forest School is a specialised learning approach that sits within the wider context of outdoor learning and woodland education. So what does that tell us? So firstly, that Forest School is a process. It's not a set of activities. It's something that changes, that grows, that there's not necessarily a set prescription for. It also says it's for all learners. So it's for everyone that down to tiny little babies all the way through to OAPs can benefit from a Forest School approach. It also mentions that it's hands-on, so it's participatory. The learners are involved with their own learning and development. It also mentions that it's in a woodland or natural environment with trees. So we know that there's something special about being in environments like this. In addition to this definition, there are six key principles behind Forest School that for something to be Forest School, as opposed to another type of outdoor learning, it must have all six. So these are, firstly, it's a long-term regular process. So that means you're going out week after week after week to the same natural spot so that learners can build up connection with the environment, with themselves, with each other, with the leaders. It takes time to build trust. It takes time to build relationships. So ideally, long-term, over the course of a year, it would be ideal going out once a week or at least once a fortnight night. Forest school happens in a woodland or a natural environment with trees to build up that nature connection. So this is really important because nature is kind of where we're supposed to be. You know, we've evolved over many thousands of years to live outside in the woods. It's only in recent hundred years or so that we've come indoors. So our senses and minds and bodies and spirits are designed to be out in nature. There are many people in schools that are using just the corner of their school playing field where they might only have one or two trees and they've had to be more creative to bring in resources, bring in logs, bring in poles, bring in sticks and leaves so that the learners can engage with them. But they're still running it in that forest school ethos way even though they haven't got a pristine woodland. Forest school is a learner-centered philosophy. That means we go where the individuals of the group want to take things. There is no set programme of activities. It's very play-based. It's very much about finding out about the individual people that we're working with, what their interests are, what their skill levels like, and supporting that gently. So as Forest School leaders, we observe our learners very carefully so that we're able to facilitate an experience, but ultimately it's the learners that are steering the ship, as it were. So I can't predict as a Forest School leaders where we'll be four months into the future because we could be anywhere depending on the group that we're working with. Forest School promotes the holistic development of the individuals that are taking part. So that means we look at the whole person, not just one aspect like their academic performance. It means we take into consideration their emotional skills, their social skills, their physical skills, their spiritual skills. The whole person is valuable and there's no hierarchy between those aspects of self. Forest School gives learners the opportunity to take supported risks. So at Forest School, we don't shy away from risks. We recognise that there are huge benefits to taking risks. And that's not just physical risks, that's all sorts of risks, social ones, emotional ones. And we carefully weigh up the benefits against the possible harm that could happen to a person. Finally, Forest School is led by qualified practitioners and as I mentioned earlier, there is a qualification associated with running and leading Forest School. Uh, it's the level three course that you need to be able to run Forest School programmes. And this is important because the training unpicks all sorts of things from the safety and the risk elements to the practical skills to the learning theory and the ethos that underpins it and um, a, a level three course will set you up with everything that you need to be able to get out there and start running your programs. As a practitioner, your learning doesn't just stop once you're qualified. It's important to reflect and develop your skills further through continual professional development. So these are the six principles behind the Forest School philosophy. And for something to be Forest School, as opposed to another type of outdoor learning, it needs to have all six of these. 
If you're interested in more depth around the six principles, I'll be making a video about that in more detail. I'll put the link in the description below. Four, the forest school community in the UK felt strongly that they wanted to try and promote and preserve these principles behind forest school so that they wouldn't get watered down or misconstrued. And so what happened in 2012 was that a charity was created for Forest School. It's called the Forest School Association or the FSA. So the FSA is a membership organisation that people can join um, and it's a professional voice for Forest School in the UK. So it's like an umbrella that people can kind of join and connect and communicate through and lobby the powers that be um, waving the Forest School flag. Five. Currently, there is no specific regulation for forest school practice or for forest school training. So there are bodies that do regulate uh, settings or organisations that might be running forest school or running forest school training, but they're not forest school specific. So for example, all schools and early year settings will have Ofsted regulations that they adhere to and inspections that will take place. So their forest school practice may get um, checked within that standard Ofsted inspection. However, most Ofsted inspectors are not specialists in forest schools. In fact, some might not have actually heard about it. So they might not know what quality forest school looks like. And I know anecdotally that this has caused some problems for some forest school practitioners. When it comes to forest school training, there are awarding bodies that will hold and regulate the qualifications, but again, they're not forest school specialists. And sometimes the awarding bodies want more people to run training because then they get more money. Maybe I shouldn't say that, that's controversial, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically in a nutshell anyone anywhere can call whatever they're doing forest school without any consequences regardless of whether it's forest school according to those six principles or not and so naturally this has caused some upset in some areas and has fueled certain misunderstandings and misconceptions about the philosophy. Concerns around this are one of the other reasons that the charity, the Forest School Association was set up. So part of its remit was to try to encourage quality forest school practice and quality forest school training. The way that the FSA has addressed this is by creating two different schemes. They have an endorsed trainers scheme, which is the only neutral scheme in the UK that recognises trainers who have met certain minimum benchmarks. There also is the FSA provider scheme, and this is for people or organisations who are running forest school programmes and they want their practice to be recognised as forest school as opposed to another type of outdoor learning. So they have to prove that what they're doing stands up against all of those six principles that I mentioned before. So these two schemes are one way that people can find forest school leaders who are abiding by the six principles or forest school trainers that are meeting certain benchmarks. And you can find out more about that on the Forest School Association's website. I'll put the link in the description below. Six, there has been various research projects undertaken specifically around forest school. So there is some evidence out there around the benefits and the outcomes for people who attend forest school programs. Now, I will say a little word of caution. So some studies are better than others in terms of how scientifically rigorous they've been. So do look at research with a critical eye when you're looking at it. However, some of the benefits that have come from these studies are things like improved confidence and self-esteem in the participants, um, improved physical development and physical health and fitness, uh, improved social skills and ability to verbalise needs, improved behaviour, which may also ripple to other contexts like in the classroom and on the playground, and also ripple effects in terms of forest school encouraging people to be outside more and that spreading through not just the learners that come to forest school, but they go home and they drag their parents to go down to the woods or their friends down to the woods. So actually it encourages the wider community to go out into nature too. 
So even though some of the research out there is a little bit dicey, it's quite useful to know that there are people gathering evidence and um, looking for these benefits and outcomes. <laughs> Particularly if you have to persuade the people who hold the purse strings. <laughs> Seven. So finally, currently at the moment, no one knows how many forest school programs are running in the UK. No one even really knows how many people are trained to run forest school programs in the UK because it's a grassroots movement, which I personally think is a great thing. It shows, you know, power of the people of wanting something and making it happen. However, that sometimes makes it a bit tricky to gather data around it and that's perhaps also why we see some misconceptions about it. Even though there isn't any firm data on this, anecdotally speaking, I know that there are people running forest school programs with all sorts of ages and in all sorts of contexts. So I've heard of forest school programs where it's young babies and their parents or carers. So, you know, right before they're one years old, they're coming out to the woods and being in a forest school environment. Then I've also heard projects of um, forest school being run with the elderly with dementia. So people in their final years are also benefiting from the approach. I've heard of many forest school programs that run as part of formal education establishments. So part of a school's curriculum or part of an early years setting. There is now actually a resurgence in forest kindergartens where in early years settings, nurseries, they actually are running kind of forest school full time, if you like. They're running it perhaps like the Scandinavian forest schools are, where they're out in the woods every day. They might not even have a building to, to be in as a base. However, forest school doesn't just happen in formal education. There are people running projects as an intervention for people's mental health. There are people working with young offenders. Um, there are people working with those with special educational needs. There are people working uh, as after school clubs or um, weekend clubs. So it can happen in all sorts of different ways. So forest school is for everyone. It can work in all sorts of different contexts, in all sorts of different ways, with all sorts of different people. And remember, it's not what you do that makes it forest school, it's how you do it that makes it forest school, that you fit it into that ethos and those six principles. So I've mentioned a few different things in this video, so I'll make sure that I put the links down in the description bar below. Have you come across any misconceptions or misunderstandings about the forest school ethos? Do let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, do give me a like and subscribe so you can join me in the woods next time. And thank you for watching. Forest school is a transformative process for all involved with holistic progress. Knowing the six principles is the key so you can facilitate forest school the next time you head to the trees. <laughs>